something. How can we sing about how wonderful he is? Amen? Something ought to move you when you think about the wonder of Jesus. When you think about the awesomeness of Jesus. When you think of the fact that he's done great and mighty things, something ought to move the people of God. Those that have been redeemed by the blood. Hallelujah. Somebody know he's wonderful. Somebody know he's a counselor. Somebody know he's an everlasting father and a prince of peace. King of kings and the Lord of lords. And we thank him for all that he is, all that he's done and continue to do in our life. What a mighty and an awesome God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Amen. Giving our to my Lord and Savior for being here on today. To each and every one of you, to those who are watching us via Facebook and YouTube, another beautiful day the Lord has made. And we ought to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. It's raining outside. Amen. But it should be raining inside. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. We thank God for his presence and his spirit on today. Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1, to God be the glory. Thank God for his setup on today. I did not realize this was the Sunday school lesson, but we thank God for that. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 1, giving honor to the deacons, trustees, ministers of the gospel, saints and friends, all the visitors, giving honor to my lovely wife. To you, you, and you. Matthew chapter 1. We're going to take a look at some specific characters today. Uh, in our terms, we might would call them sketchy. You ever met a sketchy character? But there are some sketchy characters in the Bible. That started off sketchy, but didn't end up how they started. Verse number one in Matthew 1, it says, The book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begot Isaac. Isaac begot Jacob. And Jacob begot Judah and his brothers. Judah begot Perez and Zerah by Tamar. Perez begot Hezron, and Hezron begot Ram. Ram begot Amenadab, Amenadab begot Nation, and Nation begot Salmon. Salmon begot Boaz by Rahab the prostitute. We good? Boaz begot Obed by Ruth. Obed begot Jesse. And Jesse begot David the king. David the king begot Solomon by her. Who had been. The wife of Uriah. Somebody missed that. David the king begot Solomon by her who had been the wife of Uriah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I want to talk to you for a few moments today. From the topic of there's some stuff in the bloodline. There's some stuff in the bloodline for all of us who walks in the church as if our family is so perfect. As if everybody's rep, as we say on the street, is squeaky clean.
But I believe a few of you, by the time I get finished here, I believe I'm going to have a few witnesses in this house uh, that can say there's some stuff in the bloodline. Now, what we have here in Matthew chapter 1, we have the genealogy of Jesus. Amen. How many know that Jesus has a family tree? And everybody in Jesus' family did not always serve the Lord. I said everybody in Jesus' family did not always serve the Lord. Now, let's walk through this thing. And I want to look at a few specific people. The Bible said the book of the genealogy of Jesus Christ in verse 1, the son of David, the son of Abraham. So it establishes immediately the line through which he came through. All right. Now, a genealogy is an account of the ancestry of an individual or group of descendants of an individual. Let me say that again. A genealogy is an account of the ancestry of an individual or group of descendants of an individual. Now, to us in America, we don't make a big deal out of genealogy. But in Israel, it was a very big deal who you came from. It was a very big deal uh, who your great-grandfather was, who your grandfather was, amen? That's why there's such a specific and extensive listing uh, of everybody that was in the bloodline. But guess what? Everybody in the bloodline, it doesn't necessarily mean that they serve the Lord. Everybody in the bloodline, it doesn't necessarily mean that they were in love with the Lord, amen? Uh, how many know that there's some stuff in the bloodline? In verse number two, the Bible said that Abraham begot Isaac. Isaac begot Jacob, and Jacob begot Judah and his brothers. Amen. Now, if we look for a moment at the person of Abraham, we all know him. The Bible refers to him as the father of the faithful. But guess what? There were a few moments in Abraham's life where he dropped the ball. The Bible said that there was a time, amen, there was a custom, rich and powerful kings, uh, if, can I make it plain today? If they wanted your wife, okay, they would kill the husband. And that was a normal practice in the biblical times. So when Abraham came into a certain area, he lied about Sarah being his wife, and he said, that's my sister. But yet, he's the father of the faith. Oh, y'all don't hear me in the day. Y'all act like y'all never told one before. You're looking at me strange. You're looking at Abraham strange. Amen. Anybody ever told one before something that wasn't quite true, something that wasn't quite accurate? Amen. It's amazing things how lies can spread so much faster than the truth can. But when they ask him who this beautiful lady was, he said, oh, that's my sister. Now, now, there was another time in Abraham's life uh, when he tried to help God out uh, by producing somebody by the name of Ishmael, and it was never God's will uh, for Ishmael to be birthed. How many has produced uh, some stuff in your life uh, by some of the actions that you've taken uh, back in the day? Can we remove the halo for just a few minutes? Uh, am I talking to anybody in this building? that's conjured up some stuff, amen. You tried to help God out because you were impatient, amen. So we see now Abraham wasn't perfect, but he was still used by the Lord. Somebody need to hear that today, amen. But guess what now? He had a son by the name of Isaac. Isaac later on came to a particular territory. Rich, powerful king wanted to know who Rebekah was. He did just like his daddy did. Have you ever heard your mama say, boy, you just like your daddy? Have you ever heard your mama say, sister, you just like your daddy? Especially if they're not together like they used to be back in the day. Sometimes you say, you just, she might put the word in there, your sorry daddy. Look at this now. And he did the same thing thing that his father did when they asked him who this woman was in order to save himself. 
He said, she is my sister. How many know if we are not careful, history can very well repeat itself, and that can work for us, and it can also work against us. There's some stuff in the bloodline. How many can be a witness? There's some stuff in the bloodline. How many can be a witness? There's some stuff in the bloodline. Now, now I want you to get the picture of a family reunion. If you pulled up at the family reunion and we have Uncle Abraham in the house, we got his lying son, Isaac. Now, Isaac had two kids. We haven't even got the Jacob yet. Now, notice something here. He had a son by the name of Jacob. Now, this rascal came out of the womb holding on to the heel of his brother. His name means trickster. But guess what? Jacob didn't end up how he started out. But let's look at a couple things real quick so I want you to understand about the family of Jesus. Now, I'm not talking about your family, but Jesus's. But stay tuned, if you will, if you can sit still just long enough. Uh, there came a time when the Bible said uh, that Jacob stole his brother's uh, birthright. Anybody ever stole something? Oh, it got quiet. Back in the day, you swiped something that wasn't yours. You took a bunch of grapes out of the grocery store. And because you didn't call, oh, I wish I had some real people in here. Y'all are super saved up in this building. Uh, but somebody in here lying, you stole something. Uh, there ain't no way in the world uh, you got to praise like you do and you ain't been through some stuff. Uh, do I have some real people that's made some mistakes in their life, uh, that's been some places uh, that they're not proud of, uh, have done some things uh, that they're not proud of, amen? And you know, had it not been for the Lord on your side, where would you be? There's some stuff. He stole his brother's birthright. Let me tell you something, folks. If your heart is not right, you'll betray anybody. If your heart is not right, you'll stab anybody in the back. Amen? Now watch this. Now, now to add insult to injury, not only did he steal the birthright, later on he conned him with the help of his mother. Told you there's some stuff in the bloodline. Amen? Because she actually talked Jacob into stealing the blessing from his own brother. Amen? Be very careful of being the person that talks somebody else into doing something wrong. Because how many know that you reap what you sow? If you so bad seeds, uh, sooner or later, it's going to come up again. Can you imagine pulling up at the family reunion and you see cousin Jacob standing over there eating a piece of cake, knowing he done conned his brother. But guess what? The two major errors in character that he made did not determine his destiny. Somebody need to hear that today. Yeah? Because more often than not, when people count you out, that's when God counts you in. When people throw you away, how many know that God will be a friend that sticketh closer than a brother? Are there any Jacobs in the house? None. Are there any tricks to see? See, you know, if you can tell if you got a Jacob, you got a street name. Anybody have a street name back in the day? And God forbid if it's slick. You ever know slick when you come to the family union? See, slick is the one the ladies hide their purse. When you get to the family reunion, Anybody got a slick in their family? Y'all sit up here and say, Pastor, I don't know what you're talking about. My family saved, amen. My family been saved since they were little. Everybody's got a slick in their family. Do I have any real people that want to talk to me today from the Bible, amen? Ain't nobody's family perfect. There's some stuff in the bloodline. So he stole his brother's birthright. He stole his brother's blessing, amen, which leads me to my first point, amen. There's some stuff in the bloodline, but don't let it contaminate you. There's some stuff in the bloodline, uh, but don't you let it contaminate you. That's because you had a crazy uncle don't mean you got to be crazy yourself. Just because you got a drunk uncle, that don't mean you have to do the same thing that he did, amen? There's some stuff in the bloodline. But don't let it contaminate you. So let's look at this family reunion here. Let's go a little bit further in Matthew 1 and 3. In the third verse, it says, Judah, 
whose name means praise, begot Perez, Perez, and Zerah, listen closely, by Tamar. Woo! Woo! There ain't nothing real housewives got on this. Stay with me now. This is Bible now. Judah begot, you do know what begot means. If you don't ask me at the service. Perez, listen now, and Zerah by Tamar. All right? Now, Tamar was his daughter-in-law. Somebody say family stuff. Somebody say family stuff. No, 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 no. It wasn't somebody he just met, but it was his daughter-in-law. Now, notice this now. And the reason why it happened is because uh, uh, Tamar's husband died. Amen? All right? And then the next one died, too. She was bearing husband right and left. You better stay away from her. Amen? There's stuff in the bloodline. But, but, but what was supposed to happen, amen, under the Levitical law, you were supposed to give the wife without a husband to the next son. He promised him when he became of age that he would give her to him. When he became of age, he said, psych. You ever promised somebody you were going to do something? And then it was time for you to do it, and you didn't follow through on what you said you were going to do. Y'all looking at me funny today like you have no idea what I'm talking about. Have you ever promised someone you're going to show up? Have you ever promised someone you're going to do this? Have you ever promised someone you're going to do that? And then when it came time for you to honor what you said, you were nowhere to be found. So what Tamar said, you know what, I'll fix him. So she put on some street clothes. The clothes of a harlot. Y'all know what a harlot is. And she sat out in the open place where he can see her. She said, I, 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 I'll fix him. So now, now, now Judah came down and, and he saw her and, and said, my Lord. He looked around. His brothers wasn't there. He looked around, his daddy wasn't there. Uh, his best friend was with him, and you know, he, he's the lookout guy. He ain't going to tell on you. I wish I had some witnesses up in here. So, so they began negotiating. But, but see, here's the problem. In the negotiation, she said, what you going to give me? That's what she said, okay? Now, now watch this. The problem comes in is that Judah discovered he left his debit card home. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying in here. He reached and he, he don't have anything to, to, to pay her with. Amen. How many know that sin costs? Y'all don't hear what I'm saying up in here. How many know that there's a price? Uh, that's why the Bible said the wages uh, of sin is death, uh, but the gift of God is eternal life uh, through Jesus Christ, uh, our Lord. So, so she said, I'll tell you what. Give me your signet and your staff. And then when you come back, he said, I'll bring you a goat, you know, next time. And we'll, we'll work out the price afterwards. And, and, and then it, he didn't know it was her. It was dark. Some of y'all will get that on the way home. Amen. So Judah, listen to this now. Now, he's in the family with Jesus. He slept with his daughter-in-law, amen, and had twins. It's in the bloodline. See we, see, we come to church and we act like there ain't nothing in our bloodline. We act like everybody is squeaky clean. But can, can anybody be honest enough to say there's some stuff in your family, amen? Uh, there's some stuff uh, There's some stuff you can't tell nobody about. There's some deep, dark secrets, amen? Uh, everybody here, if you be honest with yourself, you got a drunk uncle, you hope he don't come to the family reunion because the last five times he came, he turned out everything. Uh, if the truth be told, amen, uh, there's some people in our family that's hanging out on Murkison Road because uh, they've been on that stuff long enough. Uh, you've been praying for them for a long time. Uh, can we take the spiritual face off uh, and be real people and say there's some stuff uh, in your bloodline. Uh, thank God for those uh, who are serving the Lord. Uh, but you know there's a few people that's a hot mess uh, because there's a hot mess uh, in that mirror every time you look at it. Uh, I wish I had some real folks today that came here to magnify the name of the Lord. 
So, so when it was found out that she was with child, that's how you say it proper, she was with child. What happened after that? Now, Judah didn't know it was here. So he said, Stoner, isn't it easy to throw stones at somebody else's sin? Isn't it easy to point out when somebody else has done wrong? Isn't it easy to blow a trumpet? Uh, but how many know, had it not been for the grace of God, uh, many of us could have been dead years ago. Uh, how dare we stick up our nose uh, in the air just because not that you don't have sin, it's just that your sin is different. How many know that sin is still sin? And Judah said, stoner. But she brought out that staff. <laughs> she brought out the evidence. And see, you got you to understand something. Whether or not she had brought out the staff, and then he was convicted by the fact that this is what I paid her with. But see, you got to understand something. See, when he showed up at the family reunion, and when she showed up at the family reunion with them two boys, uh, you, you ain't got to say nothing. That just, just tell your grandma to walk by. <laughs> Y'all know them grandmas that know everything. They got that another level of sermon. When them boys walk by like that, they go, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. The, the, them, them boys look just like Judah. I don't know what's going on here. I know this is his daughter. I wish I had some real people up in here. Y'all know them grandmas, hey, man. See, it'll go right over our head, uh, but you can't get up past a great grump. They be sitting up in a little circle at the family reunion, and them boys walk about their head like Judah, their hair like Judah, almost the same complexion. Uh, I believe, uh, and, and then they get together in the corner, and then they say, uh, you know they say, oh, talk to me, somebody. You know they say that them boys are Judah. Now see, the reason why some of you are laughing is because they might be a Judah in your family. The reason why some of you are laughing uh, that might be a Judah, anybody got a few, uh, a few Judas in your family? Oh, come on, folks. Come on, folks. Uh, see, everybody act like we got here the right way, amen. Uh, some of us slipped up in here, amen. Uh, thank God for the grace of God. Uh, some of us came forth as a result of a hookup. Uh, oh, I wish I had a Holy Ghost witness, amen. Uh, some of us was one of those people, amen, uh, that years later we popped up, amen, uh, and we showed up on the doorstep, uh, and then the man was wondering who in the world's child is this. Uh, that rascal looked just like you. You know whose child it was. Uh, the problem is, uh, that you were drunk as a skunk the night the child was a ski. I'm talking about there's stuff in the bloodline. It's in the Bible. Can you imagine? TV can't touch this. So he slept with his daughter-in-law Tamar, but he's in the family of Jesus. He messed up, but he's in the family of Jesus. Tamar took things in her own hands, but he's in the family of Jesus. Stay with me. I'm going somewhere with this. In, in verse number five, Salmon begot Boaz. Very popular person during that time. By Rahab. Rahab was a harlot or a prostitute. The oldest profession in the Bible. Now, she, she managed, see, when God has a plan for your life, you're going to work your way into the place where you need to be. Because she started off in the streets, but she ended up in the house. She started off a stranger, and then she ended up part of the covenant of God. How many know you can start off a wild person, uh, but when Jesus gets a hold of you, uh, how many know that Jesus has a way uh, of cleaning us up from the inside? Uh, Jesus has a way uh, of wiping away our past. Uh, Jesus has a way. Uh, Y'all looking at me like you never had a past. Uh, Y'all looking at me like you never done anything wrong. Uh, Y'all looking at me like you never said anything wrong. Uh, Y'all looking at me like you don't know how to spell sin. Uh, but can I get a witness in here? that know that you've been there, you know you've done that, you know you got a t-shirt. Do I have any witnesses in this house that say there's some stuff in my bloodline I can't even tell everybody about? Hmm? Rahab was a Canaanite prostitute in Jesus' family. Can you imagine when she showed up to the family reunion sitting over there eating a the bowl of potato, potato salad? And, and, and the elderly ones get together again, and they say, 
Wasn't she the one that used to have the house on the top where you can welcome visitors in? Oh, y'all don't get what I'm saying. See, see, this is Bible. Wasn't she the one? Rahab had a reputation. But guess what? She worked her way into the Bible because she did not stay in the place where God found her in. Somebody need to get this today. Yeah. See, it doesn't matter what you did yesterday. It doesn't matter what you did last week, last month, last year, or 20 years ago. How many know that God's mercy is new every single morning? You ought to thank God. You may not be what you want to be, but thank God you're not like you used to be. How many can say, I've come a long way since I found the Lord. She was blessed because she helped the Israelites when they came to spy the land of Jericho. You remember that? She put the scarlet red in the window, and when they saw the red, whoo, I wish I had a few more minutes. Uh, when they saw the red, there's something about the color red. The color red means redemption. The color red means something's been washed. The color red means something's been given a second chance. The color red means the blood has been shed. How many know without the shedding of blood, which I had a Holy Ghost witness, I said without the shedding of blood, there's no remission. Without the shedding of blood, there's no forgiveness. But how many glad today that Jesus Jesus Christ uh, shed his precious blood uh, that you and I might have uh, a right to the tree of life. Now, she's in the family. What about Ruth? Obed begat Ruth. All right. Now, Ruth was a woman from Moab whose husband died. And women during that particular time, if they didn't have a husband, they were really in trouble. Because it, was, it wasn't customary that they worked, okay? So you got in trouble. So, so, so you had to hook up with the right guy. Amen? So she started off outside the family of God. But she ended up inside the family of God. See, when her sister went back home, she told her mother, Naomi, amen, she said, I'm going where you go. I'm going to live where you live, and your God's going to be my God. Y'all don't hear me today. She said, wherever you go, I'm going to go. I don't know what you tapped into, but I want some of it, amen. Whoever your God is, I want to serve him. Whoever your God is, I want to love him. Whoever your God is, I want to glorify him. Anybody here hungry and thirsty for righteousness uh, because the Bible said if you hunger and thirst after righteousness uh, you shall be filled said your God shall be my God point number two there's some stuff in the bloodline but don't let it keep you stuck in the past there's some stuff in the bloodline but don't let it keep you stuck in the past verse six and Jesse begot David the king oh we're getting in the tall grass now Jesse begot David in the king, the, the greatest king in the history of Israel. Nobody even close. But notice what it said about David in the latter part of verse 6. David the king begot Solomon. Interestingly, it doesn't even mention her name. By her who had been the wife of Uriah. By her who had been the wife of Uriah. By her who had been. See, there's some stuff in the bloodline. There's some stuff in the bloodline. It doesn't even call her by name. But it calls her by her position. Now, can you imagine Bathsheba at the family reunion? Coming in with Solomon. Same complexion as David. Same good hair as David. Because y'all know David was smooth now. Come on now. Amen. Can you imagine her showing up at the family reunion, amen, and then your grandma and your great-grandma and your aunties and all them get together? They say, y'all know they say. Y'all know they say. Y'all sitting to me out like y'all never said that before, amen. Y'all know they say 
that that's the king's boy. Y'all know they say something went on. And now, if, if you don't think nothing ever went on in your family, if there's some people a little bit older than you that's still living, get them by themselves one day. Oh, y'all to hear what I'm saying, man? If they're a little bit older than you, I'm going to tell you something. All you got to do is get them by themselves one day, and they'll start telling you who your cousin is, uh, how your cousin got here. Amen. You know over there. Amen. Especially if you're getting ready to date somebody, you better be very careful, too, because uh, your great-grandmama and your great-great-grandma, they know everybody you ain't supposed to date because you don't know that they're your cousin. Oh, I wish I had a witness. Uh, you, you don't know that they're your cousin, uh, but she knows. Uh, but see, the old folks taught them back in the day, uh, don't you tell nobody what goes on in this house uh, whatever goes on uh, in this house uh, it stays in this house but how many could be a witness that there's some stuff uh, in the bloodline uh, if there was some stuff in Jesus's family then there's some stuff uh, in your family in my family in her family and in his family but yet David even with all the arrows he's the only person in the Bible that's called a man after God's own heart the only person in the Bible that's called a man after God's own heart. You know why? Because every time he messed, he messed up and fell down, he got back up and got back in the race. That's the key. It's not how many times you fall. It's if you have the wherewithal to get back up and get back in the race. How many know that the race is not given to the swift nor to the strong, but to the one that endures? Do you have the wherewithal and the strength and the love for God? You can get knocked down a thousand times, but as long as you have have, uh, the wherewithal uh, to get back up uh, as long as you have the strength uh, to get back up uh, and start over again. Uh, how many know that every day you get out of bed, uh, you get uh, a brand new mercy? The only person, uh, the Bible's not filled with perfect people, neither is the church. Mm. Did you know there are more chapters written about David than anybody in the Bible? Anybody, including Jesus. There are more chapters. Most commentators say somewhere between 54 and 65. Written about one man. And we wonder why he's called a man after God's own heart. Amen. Did he make some errors? Yes. Did he make some grave mistakes? Yes. But he got up and brushed himself off. See, if you have the strength to get up and brush yourself off, uh, anybody ever made some errors in their life? Uh, anybody ever fell down? Uh, see, you got to understand there's some stuff uh, in our bloodline, uh, and we keep coming to church, uh, act like we come uh, out of a perfect situation. Uh, many of us came out of, uh, of, a, of adulterous situations. Uh, many of us came out of a hookup. Uh, some people don't even know who their daddy is uh, or where he lives. Uh, can we be r real for just a second uh, up in here? Nobody's family is perfect, uh, but just because uh, you got a rough start, uh, it doesn't mean uh, that you have to end up uh, in the place uh, where you started in. Now, David had a son named Solomon. Oh, ho, ho. crazy rascal. <laughs> he had 700 wives. But yet the Bible calls him the wisest man to ever live. Ha <laughs> ha. 300 concubines. You, you hadn't had trouble. You, you, you haven't had drama until you got a thousand people living in your house. You hadn't had mess on your hands. Until you got, can you imagine when they started arguing? Oh, y'all don't hear what I'm saying in here. He had a son named Solomon. He had seven, he was the king and the wisest person to ever live. But yet he had 700 wives and 300 concubines. The problem with it was as he got older, he let his guard down. When he let his guard down, they began to change his heart. That's why you cannot hang around everybody. Everybody cannot be in your inner circle. You better be very careful who you let in your space. Even sometimes there's people that name the name of God that you just got to steer clear of. 
because just because they can call on the name doesn't mean they're acquainted with the person behind the name. Oh, I wish I had a praying church in here today. There's some stuff in the bloodline, and they turned his heart. If I had a little more time, I would tell you about a man named Uzziah. He, he began to uh, prosper and his kingdom uh, began to thrive. Uh, but at the height of his kingdom, uh, he got full uh, of himself uh, and he stepped into the office uh, of the priest. Uh, uh, that's why it's so important uh, to stay in your lane. Uh, every time there's problems uh, anywhere, uh, somebody uh, is trying to do something uh, that they have no business. Uh, somebody uh, is trying to walk in a lane uh, that they had no business. Uh, and when he stepped in the lane uh, of the priest, uh, which was not his place uh, they were warned amen uh, and when he didn't heed the warning uh, he broke out in leprosy uh, and was a leper until the day uh, that he died uh, some of us got spiritual leprosy because uh, we're running uh, outside of our lane uh, trying to be something uh, that we're not uh, trying to be somebody uh, that God uh, hasn't called us to do uh, if I could go uh, a little bit further I could tell you about a man named Hezekiah one of the most godly kings uh, in the entire Bible. But at some point, uh, he began to show uh, the Babylonians uh, all of his glory and all his riches. Uh, don't tell uh, everybody everything uh, that's going on uh, with you uh, all the time because uh, they may flip it uh, and turn it uh, and use it against you. Uh, and after a while, uh, those same folks uh, came in there and ramshacked Jerusalem, and he had a son the name of Manasseh, who was the worst king in the history of Israel, the worst king. Can you imagine when Manasseh shows up at the family reunion? What happens when he wants a slice of sweet potato pie? What happens when Manasseh come in here with his idol worshiping self, amen? Are you going to still stand for the works of the Lord, amen? See, there's a Manasseh up in every family. I'm about to get this wrapped up. But point number three says there's some stuff in the bloodline, but don't let it determine your direction. Amen. There's some stuff in the bloodline, but don't let it determine your direction. The challenge that we have in the church is that we always want to micromanage the life of somebody else when we have so much work that needs to be done in our own life. If the truth be told, everybody's family is a little bit jacked up. If the truth be told, everybody's family Family is a little bit raggedy. Do I have a few witnesses uh, in here that say uh, there's some folks uh, in my family? I love them, uh, but they have decided uh, not to serve the Lord. Uh, if the truth be told, uh, there's a Rahab uh, in your family. Uh, if the truth be told, uh, there's a Jacob uh, in your family. Uh, if the truth be told, uh, there's a lion Isaac uh, in your family. Uh, if the truth uh, be told, uh, there's a Moabite uh, in your family. Uh, if the truth be told, uh, there's some family members uh, out on the street uh, strung out on that stuff uh, for a number of years. Uh, you act like uh, it doesn't exist. Uh, but do I have some real people that say my family may not be squeaky clean, uh, but I've made up in my mind uh, for God uh, I'm going to live. Uh, I made up in my mind uh, for God uh, I'm going to die. Uh, are there any people in this house today uh, that's got a made up mind uh, you're going to choose uh, you this stay uh, who you gonna serve uh, but if you made up in your mind uh, as for me uh, in my house uh, we will uh, serve the Lord uh, as for me uh, in my house uh, we will worship the Lord uh, as for me uh, in my house uh, we will glorify the name of the Lord there's some stuff in the bloodline and it gets a little ugly sometimes Sometimes there's ruffle feather at the family reunion. All this was in Jesus' bloodline. See, Jesus' family was raggedy. And they had issues. And they were imperfect. Can I tell you a secret? Jesus' family is still kind of raggedy. Somebody going to get that half the way home. 
You, you're not going to get that to 20 minutes. Jesus' family is still kind of, there's some stuff going on with Jesus' people. But guess what? The beautiful thing about salvation is that he said, I didn't come for the righteous. I came to seek and to save that which is somebody missed that. He said, I didn't come for the righteous, uh, but I came to seek and to save that which is lost. If you own the right road, just stay on the right road. But he came for the ones who were messed up. He came for the ones that ignored him. He came for the ones that didn't have any hope. He came for the ones that didn't have any help. All of those, all those names we mentioned were in the family of Jesus. Imperfect family, messed up family. See, think about it like this. After all you've done in your past, God still saved you. <laughs> After all you've done in your past, God still saved you. When you came home and didn't know what day it was, he still saved you. When you came home running the streets, God still saved you. See, the problem, many of us get in church and we act like we've never been in the streets. Many of us give in church and act like we've never been drunk. Uh, many of us get in church and act like we've never been high. Many of us get in church and act like we never stole something. Uh, but I wish I had some real people say that, that you know you got some stuff in your past. Uh, you know you got some stuff in your family. Therefore, you can't look down on nobody because everybody got some skeletons in the closet. Do I have some real people that say I've been there, I've done that, i got a t-shirt, but I can stand here today uh, giving God the glory because I know I didn't come this far by myself. Uh, I didn't make it this far on my own. Uh, had it not been for God's glory, had it not been for God's mercy, had it not been for God's love uh, that reached way down uh, and picked me up, uh, where would we be today? There's some stuff in the bloodline, in everybody's bloodline. So, do yourself a favor. Stop reading the Bible, this will help you, as if we are above them. It will help you in your interpretation, and it will help you in your application. See, sometimes we read about people that messed up in the Bible, we go, oh, they were so bad. Oh, really? Hmm? You got an uncle on that stuff, too. You got a cousin on that stuff, too. Every family got somebody that had a child out of wedlock. Come on, somebody. Talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. Huh? Everybody got a, everybody got a family member that may be still trying to get sober. Come on. And you prayed with them. You prayed for them. You prayed with them. And you prayed for them. And they do good for a while. Then they go back to what is familiar. See, we act like we don't know what struggle is. But some of you know exactly what struggle is because you've been at the point where you wanted to give up. You've been at the point you wanted to throw in the towel. Anybody ever wanted to give up and say, what's the use? Things will never change. But God tapped you on your shoulder and whispered in your ear that, lo, I'm with you always, even to the end. You tried to throw in the towel, but you couldn't. You tried to give up, and God reminded you that the race is not given to the swift nor to the strong, but to the one that endures to the end. God reminded you that he begun a good work in you and he that begun a good work in you is going to perform it. You tried to give up and God reminded you, I didn't bring you this far just to bring you this far. I didn't bring you this far just to leave you where you at. I started something in you and I'm going to see it through to the finish line. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he shall strengthen your heart there's some stuff in the bloodline don't don't read the bible with a snooty attitude as if to say they had issues there's still some stuff in the bloodline there's still some weaknesses bloodline. There's still some trickery in the 
bloodline. There's still some shadiness in the bloodline. There's still some crookedness. See, see, you know who we are, the church? We're Israel 2.0. We're Israel 2.0. We act like we can't relate to their mess, but we can. See, see, that's why redemption is that much sweeter, because we've been on the other side. And once you've been on the other side and you've been there and done that and got a t-shirt and God let you survive all the mess that you've been through, amen, then we can't do nothing but give him praise. We can't do nothing but give him thanks. We can't do anything but shout hallelujah. It doesn't matter what family you came out of, amen. The important thing is where you go when it's time for you to go. The most important thing is that your name is not written, amen, anywhere you want it to be written, but it needs to be written in the Lamb's book of life and a way to get your name in the Lamb's book of life, you must be born again. You must be born again. You need to know the Lord Jesus and the pardon of your sins before you leave this earth. You got to know him in a personal way. But while you're getting to know him, stop rehearsing everything in the bloodline. It is what it is. It is what it is. This is the line that God the Father brought Jesus Christ through. And the reason why he let all those names of all that messiness and sinfulness into that genealogy, God was saying down through the corridors of time, I can change anybody. I can deliver anybody. I can set anybody free. I can take somebody on the wrong track and turn that thing around. That's the story of the gospel. It's the good news that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. It could be a bumpy road, but if you stay on the road that leads to glory, Watch what God can do in your life. Three things. There's some stuff in the bloodline, but don't let it contaminate you. Sometimes you need to tell some of your relatives, no, I'm not going to do that. Hold your head up high. You're not the person you used to be. You don't go to places you used to go. It's not that, it's not that you think you're better. Because people that try to manipulate you will always use that on you, okay? Be, be, be careful of that, okay? It's not that you think you're better. It's just that you move from your old house. You move from your old friends. You move to a brand new way of life. And if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. And don't go down those roads anymore. Don't run with that crowd anymore. If you want to run them, that's fine. They'll call you super saved, holy roller. Doesn't matter what they call you. What matters is what you answer to. Some people are still answering to the name they used to call you back in the street. You got a new name because you got a new savior. Number two, there's some stuff in the bloodline, but don't let it keep you stuck in the past. There's some stuff in the bloodline, but don't let it keep you stuck in the past. <coughs> the past is always filled with memories, good and bad. Don't camp on top of the bad. Learn from the bad and magnify the good. Learn from the bad and magnify the good. Last thing, there's some stuff in the bloodline but don't let it determine your direction. There's some stuff in the bloodline, but don't let it determine your direction. There's a man named Jesus who this first chapter leads up to. He came into the world to save sinners. Paul said, of whom I am chief, whatever's in your bloodline, it could stop with you. Just because they did it, don't mean you have to. Just because they were caught up in it, don't mean you have to. Somebody has to be the light of the world. Somebody has to be the city set on a hill that cannot be hid. Somebody has to dare to be different, even if you look that funny, amen, as long as you can lay down and go to sleep at night knowing that you're right with God, mission accomplished for another day. If you're here today 
and you don't know the Lord Jesus and the pardon of your sins. And you never met him before. You never gave him your heart, your mind, your life, and your soul. I ask you to come now while the blood is running warm in your veins. Tomorrow's promise to no man now is the acceptable time. Today is the day of salvation. Today, if you hear the Lord's voice, harden not your heart. Or maybe you're here today and you're already saved and you're looking for a church home. And God has placed upon your heart to unite with the Beauty Spot Church family. You can also come forward. Amen at this time. God bless you. God bless you. Will there be another one? Come on, brother. Come on, brother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's, st there's still room. We got time. There's still room. We got time. If you want to turn over a new leaf, if you want to make Jesus Christ the Lord of your life or make this church your church home, it, two things that everybody needs before they leave this earth. You need to know the Lord Jesus in a personal way, in the pardon of your sins. And you also need to have a place called home. There are going to be some challenging, challenges that come in your life you cannot handle by yourself. And you got to know that the prayers of the righteous are holding you up. Amen? Some of us made it this far because somebody prayed for us and had us on their mind, took the time to pray for us took the time to hold us up before the Lord, even when we didn't know we were being held up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, man, woman, boy, or girl, young or old, everybody needs the Lord. Everybody needs the Lord. Everybody needs the Lord. Doesn't matter what you did this past week, everybody needs the Lord. Doesn't matter what you did last month, everybody needs the Lord. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. When he knocks on the door of our heart, all we have to do is open up the door and allow him to come in. You will not have peace until you know the Lord. You will not have real joy until you know the Lord. You got to know him for yourself. Fall in love with him today. The gospel invitation is being extended if he's speaking to your heart. And you know you need to make that decision. Make it now while the blood. Finish out December the right way. Finish it out the right way and said, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. Not my mother, not my father, my sister, nor my brother, but it's me standing in the need of prayer. I need you. Sometimes that's the prayer. That's the only prayer that you can form with your word. I need you, Jesus. I need you in my life. I need you to lead me. I need you to guide me in the way in which you have me to go. God is still fishing. And he's still calling sinners unto himself. See, what we as the church need to understand as we move forward in this season, you don't clean fish while it's in the water. You, you got to pull them out. Put them in the chest with the ice. Then you take them back home. And then you can clean them. See, 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 the problem is uh, we want to clean people outside of the church doors and not realize we don't have the ability or the capacity to clean them. See, what, what you do is you throw the bait out, which is the gospel, and you reel them in. And then when you get them in the house, amen, amen. See, remember, you don't clean the fish till they get in the house. Remember, you don't clean the fish till they get in the house. So when they get in the house, then they can get exposed to the word and the word will cleanse, Amen. That's the key. Just let everybody know that Jesus is still real. He's still real. He's still real. And there's too much going on in the world to be living and existing without the Lord. Too much. Too much drama. Too much mess. Too much foolishness. You need to know the Lord. Every day you lay down and you don't know the Lord, you're, 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 you're at risk. Don't assume you're going to see tomorrow. Tomorrow's promise to no man now is the acceptable time. Today is the day of salvation. Every head bow, every eye close. Father God, we love you today. We thank you for all that you are, all that you have done, and all that you continue to do in the lives of your people. Thank you for blessing our going out and our coming in. 
in the city and in the field. Thank you, Lord, that your eyes are over the righteous and your ears are open to our cry. Thank you, Lord, that no good thing will you withhold from us if we walk uprightly before you and do those things that are pleasing in your sight. Walk in your ways, keep your commandments, uh, and obey your statutes. Order our steps in your word. Lead and guide us down the path of righteousness for your name's sake, for your glory, honor, and your praise. Lord, we lift up the bereaved families to you even right now. You know the heaviness of their heart. You know what they're presently going through. Wrap your ever-loving arms around them and assure them of your presence that you'll never leave them nor forsake them, but you'll be with them even to the end. Lord, we thank you for these two brothers. Lord, we thank you for touching their heart on today. Thank you for touching their lives. We thank you for what you're going to do in and through them. Eyes haven't seen, neither has ears heard, neither has it entered into the heart of men the things that God has prepared for those that love him. And Lord, we love you today because you heard our cry and pitied our every groan. We thank you, Lord, in advance for what you're going to do in the presence of your people. It is in Jesus' name we do pray that all the people of God say amen, amen, amen. Somebody give God a hand clap of praise. All right, we have two brothers here coming up to unite with the church under their Christian experience. Um, the first one is, give me your name, Andre, brother Andre, Andre Poison, okay, okay, and Jala Aki, oh, unique name, Jala Aki, amen, let's give them a big hand, hallelujah, thank God for touching the lives of young brothers, amen, thank God for touching the lives of young brothers. Thank God for touching the lives of young brothers. Amen. And we just give God the praise for them. Amen. Amen. To God be the glory for the great things that he has done, is doing, and continues to do in our lives. What a mighty God we serve. And we thank him for all that he is, all that he's done, and all that he continues to do in the lives of his people. Amen. Let us remember something as we um, begin to bring these next couple weeks to a close and prepare ourselves for 2024. Amen. We need to be specific in the things we ask God for. It's for divine direction. And the reason, and the reason why I'm saying that is, and hear, me, hear, hear my heart, you won't have a future church if you don't have the next generation in it. Okay? So we need to be specific as a church to become, and I've given this mandate to Reverend Edmondson also with the prayer group, amen, uh, to, be, to have a multi-generational church. We're going to be purposeful about that as we're going into 2024, amen, because you all know God is plucking. God is plucking. Amen. So we believe that he's going to replace as he plucks. Amen. But we're looking for the continuity of the church as the days and the years go by. Amen. So be very specific with our prayers because we need every generation represented in the church so we can move the church forward. Amen. How many believe that God's going to do some great things in the midst of his people? And we give him all the praise. We give them all the glory and honor. So continue to pray for those young brothers, amen, and the younger brothers that's going to come, and the younger sisters that's going to come, and the younger nieces and nephews that's going to come and be the church of today and tomorrow. Amen, amen. We give God praise for all that he is. Sister Evans done gone again. <laughs> Somebody get her real quick. <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. She's coming. <laughs> Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. How many got something out of the lesson on today? Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Always strive for the discernment to make the Bible relevant because a lot of times people will try to tell you what you can't accomplish because the family that you came from. 
or, or the part of the community that you came from or the neighborhood that, you're given, that you came up out of. Amen? But I read somewhere where it says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen? Amen. Sister Evans, you can come forward real quick. Amen. This is our wonderful admin. She is a tremendous blessing to Beauty Spot Baptist Church, and she has been cranking this year. Amen. We have quadrupled in the amount of funerals and this and that and meetings and you name it, and she's been moving it forward. Amen. And I thank God for her. Amen. And we just, amen. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. So this is just something for the church uh, to say we love you. Thank you for all that you do. And Merry Christmas. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. For the great things that he has done and is doing in our midst. Amen. Amen. And Sister Clark, can you please come forward and give us our announcements and then we'll come back uh, with our closing. Good afternoon, church. These are our announcements as we have them. The Musicians Appreciation Service will take place this afternoon at 3 p.m. Please, all that can, please come back out. Don't let the weather keep you home. The men's ministry will distribute um, Christmas fruit and candy bags to our congregation today after the morning worship. Um, they will be posted at every door with bags. Applications for the Beatrice McNeil Scholarship are due today. Pastor Fuller, ushers, choir, and congregation will render services at Oak Ridge First Baptist Church in Oak Ridge, North Carolina on January the 14th, 2024. Transportation uh, for the church will be provided. If you would like to attend, please place your name on the sign-up sheet in the foyer. The Pastor's Aid Ministry will have a Christmas basket in the foyer for the pastor and first lady to receive blessings from the congregation for Christmas. Please feel free to place your blessings um, for them in the basket. The basket will be available until December the 24th. Checks should be made out to, uh, to Juan O'Fuller. Thank you in advance for your generous giving to our man of God. The youth mission will go Christmas caroling to the sick and shut-in members on Wednesday, December 20th. Please meet at the church at 9 a.m. The food bank and clothing closet will be open next week on Tuesday, then will be closed until January the 2nd, 2024. Watch night service will be on Sunday, December the 31st at 11 p.m. The men's ministry will host a part two of the firearm safety, self-defense, and law forum on January the 8th, 2024 at 6.30 p.m. This training is open to the church and the community our very own brother Ron McDougal is our facilitator. Um, please come out and receive this valuable firearm safety information. There will be no children's church on December the 24th. Uh, we'll resume on December 31st, uh, featuring our last 2023 children's celebration. We also have a card, a thank you card to the church. Thank you for being so kind. Your thoughtfulness means so much. Dear church family, thank you so much for your prayers, thoughts, cards, texts, and emails through our time of bereavement. This is from the Hamilton family. Thank you. The announcements that us govern ourselves accordingly. Um, in regards to that announcement for January the 14th, um, the Oak Ridge, North Carolina, is right outside of Winston-Salem, and it is on a Sunday. Okay, so if you are interested in going, there will be services still held here. Um, but if you're interested in going with us to Winston-Salem, all who want to, there will be transportation. But please uh, put your name on the list out there so we can have an idea about how many people will be traveling. Okay, that's the second Sunday in the month of January in Oak Ridge, North Carolina. Amen. Amen. Let us stand to our feet as we prepare to close. Amen. With uplifted hands, now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us now, henceforth, and forever. Let us say amen, amen, amen. Musicians appreciation at three.
you later.